Um, good. So uh, we are uh, we are doing the live thing again today, and of course, the biggest thing about it is we are um, talking about the Steelers. When uh, re uh, reality is they're eight and two, and I think people don't understand this quite quite understand this. So here it is, because they won yesterday to go eight and two, and the Chiefs lost to get their first loss. The Steelers actually control their own destiny when it comes to the number one seed. Um, they could be the number one seed in the AFC this year. Long way to go. I get it. I mean, there's what, still seven games left. Anything can happen. I mean, they could, you know, get a couple of injuries and lose three or four games, and then all of a sudden they're the number four seed. But the reality is – they are right now in a situation where if they win the rest of their games because they play the Chiefs on Christmas Day, you don't forget that, if they win the rest of their games, they are going to be a team that controls the number one seed. Uh, yesterday's win was incredible from the standpoint of they didn't score a touchdown and they still were able to beat the Ravens, who have a really high score, you know, high scoring offense. If you'd have told me that the Steelers didn't score a touchdown yesterday, if you'd have told me that, you know, prior to the game, I said there's no way they win. You know, I say, well, even if they get four or five, six field goals, they're still probably going to lose. But their defense was unbelievable. Their defense really did what they do all the time against Lamar Jackson, which is they basically completely took him out of his game plan. They took him out of the game in so many ways. They basically dominated Lamar Jackson in that offense. And let me just say this as an aside, okay, because there's a lot of people that want to compare the Steelers and the Ravens and all oh, their two organizations that are committed to winning and they're com committed to stability and they're, you know, they're very similar in how their, you know, philosophy is and all that other stuff. Let me tell you this much right now. The reason the Steelers are, what, 8-1 and one in their last nine games against the Ravens and I wrote about this today, is because the Ravens play the dumbest brand of football I've ever seen. The Steelers play winning football, okay? Winning football. The Ravens, on the other hand, right? The Ravens find ways to beat themselves every single game they play. I mean, it's a testament to how good Lamar Jackson and, and the talent is on that team that they have seven wins because they play such a dumb brand of football. I mean... The reality is the Steelers struggled a little bit on offense yesterday, but the thing they don't do, and this is why you've got to love their chances, you know, down the stretch in their last seven games, if you look at where they play and who they play, you've got to love their chances because they don't beat themselves. That's the, I mean, there's a lot we can say that we like about the Steelers, but here's the reality of it. They don't beat themselves. And if you don't beat yourself, know what happens you're going to win a lot of games just because because other teams are going to beat themselves other teams are going to make mistakes but 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 how often you know one of the one of the stats they were talking about is you know the Steelers haven't given up a point off a turnover I think it was like in like six or seven games or something like that but if you look at where their turnovers take place they almost never make mistakes in their own end I mean, yesterday, okay, yeah, they, 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 the, the turnover actually cost them three points because it was in the end zone, but they gave the ball to the Ravens on the eighty uh, on the twenty yard line. They're still eighty yards away from from scoring. It's no different than if they punted. Actually, you know, very similar. Had, had they punted from the fifty yard line, they, they the, the reality is they don't make mistakes that beat themselves. They don't put their defense in bad situations. So even though a lot of us would like to see them open it up a little bit more on offense, especially with Russell Wilson, the reality is they're content. They're content to say, we don't believe any team out there can consistently go 60, 70, 80 yards, whatever, against our defense. And so, you know, if we have to punt, it's not the worst thing in the world because we believe our defense if we give them 70 yards of field or 80 yards of field, they're going to make enough plays to either force a punt or force a turnover. And that's what they do. They don't make mistakes. 
And, and you know, if, if you look, you know, they, they've had some procedure penalties and things. Nobody's perfect. Nobody is. But the Steelers, in the mo- for the most part, they play the kind of game where they are going to basically make you beat them. You know, against the Colts, they made some, you know, key mistakes and whatnot early. And, of course, you know, they got they, they ended up losing the game. But you look at most of these games. And, you know, they've played, I think, seven games that are one possession games, and they've won five of them. It, it, it's mostly because they don't beat themselves, and other teams do. And I think that's what we see, and that's what we see every time they play the Ravens. You know, don't, don't tell me about John Harbaugh and how good of a coach he is and how – because, frankly, I, I see a team that plays stupid every single time they play. In fact, I, I, I said this yesterday, and I'll say it again, John Harbaugh – could learn a lot from his brother, Jim Harbaugh, because Jim Harbaugh's teams are boring as hell to watch. They play meat and potatoes football. But you know what? They don't beat themselves for the most part. And he's coaching the Chargers, for God's sake, which is one of the most star-crossed you know, organizations on the planet. They've been the same team for like 45 years where they beat themselves all the time. He's got them actually in better position playoff-wise than the Ravens because they – maximize by not beating themselves. So the Steelers, to me, okay, one of the things about them that we're not talking enough about is they. this might be Mike Tomlin's best coaching job in a lot of ways. Um, and I know we go back to, well, he won eight games with the Doc. I, I don't know that I really think that that was all that impressive when you really go back and look and peel back. Um, you know, he won eight games or whatever it was. They had a winning record with Kenny Pickett and Mason and that have made the playoffs. That wasn't bad, I guess, last year. But I, but what he's doing this year, I'm going to say this. I watched the Chiefs play yesterday against the Bills. And this has to be the first time in three, four, maybe five, six years where I said, those are the two best teams in the AFC. And you know what? The Steelers are right there with them. The Steelers are right there with those two teams. There's been a lot of years over the last three, four, five years where I'd watch those teams play or whoever the best teams in the AFC was, and I'd be like, this is a completely different game than what the Steelers are playing. But I was watching the Chiefs and the Bills yesterday. And you know what? I might give both of those teams a little bit of an edge over the Steelers, and here's why. As much as I think Russell Wilson is a good player, which I do, both of those teams, I think we can all agree, have better quarterbacks, more dynamic players at, at the quarterback position. So I'll give them a slight, slight edge, a slight edge, but not much, not much at all. I mean, last year when the Steelers played the Bills, I thought there's no chance the Steelers are going to beat the Bills. And I know there's some people that think, oh, well, it was a close game. It, it, they were The Bills were never in danger of losing that game. If they played this year, I don't know. I know this. If they played this year, um, I, I, I would like the Steelers' chances. I would like the Steelers' chances to go get the Bills. Um, I, I actually would like the Steelers' chances against the Chiefs. I'm not saying they would beat those teams. You know, obviously a lot has to happen in a playoff game. But for the first time in four, five, six, seven, eight years, whatever it's been, okay, I look at the top teams in the AFC. And I basically say the Steelers could play with any of them. In fact, right now, the Steelers are one of them. It looks to me like the AFC is a three-team race. The Steelers, the Chiefs, and the Bills. As I said before, the Ravens have some dynamic players and they have some talent, but they play so stupid and they play, they kill themselves every single week. You're not going to win in the playoffs doing that, Okay. I will say the Broncos and uh, the Chargers have gotten better since the Steelers played them, but they're still – I like the Steelers to beat them both in the playoffs. They've already proven they can beat them, uh, and I don't think either of those teams is ready to win this year. Um, The only other team that may be a little bit of a wild card is the Texans, but they've had some key injuries that really changed their profile as well. So I'm going to tell you when I look at this Steelers team, I look around the AFC, I say, why not? Especially if their defense can do what they did yesterday. Uh, Because the reality of the situation is their defense in so many ways kicked the Ravens' ass. 
And I know that, you know, the Ravens, uh, the, the, maybe it's a, a rivalry thing, and maybe it's a situation of where they just sort of have the Ravens, uh, they have Lamar Jackson's number and all that other stuff. But I'll tell you, man, when you watched what the Steelers did yesterday, you realize this defense has a chance to really be elite. Like, there's been some leaks that have sprung. Obviously, Washington was able to do a couple things. But reality is, you know what? This defense healthy. This defense dialed in. This defense, right, playing as a unit, connected like they did the other day. They're going to be one hell of a defense to try and beat. And, and I think what's really cool about this defense is if you look at yesterday's game, right, because of the nature of the game, and Mike Tomlin talked about this today at his press conference, the nature of the game meant that they probably had to play a lot of players uh, just because, um, you know, they were going to have a lot of plays and they were going to do a lot of different things and all that other stuff. So, you know, he wanted to make sure that everybody was fresh. If you look at this team on defense, right, Patrick Queen obviously did his thing. Minka Fitzpatrick played really, really well. They got contributions from guys like, you know, uh, Peyton Wilson and Deshaun Elliott, uh, Nick Herbig, Landon Roberts. You go down the list, they had guys up and down the defense that made big plays. I mean, Peyton Wilson's a rookie. He's a rookie, an absolute rookie. And I think that really when, when, when we look at that, um, he made one of the biggest plays of the game. And it was an incredible game. It was an incredible play at a really important time of the game. So to me, you know, you look at the way that the Steelers are going to play and the way they play defense, and you say, listen, they can get better each week even than they are right now. Right now their defense is good. They've had some leaks here and there. They need to figure some things out. But for the for the most part, um, it's it's important to note that because they've got depth, TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, these are guys that they can keep fresh and they can be fresh in the fourth quarter. Cam Sutton coming along. Cam Sutton coming along now. I'm not saying he's, you know, I'm not saying he's Deion Sanders in his prime, but what Cam Sutton does is give them a little bit more depth. And as Mike Tomlin talked about. Today, Mike Tomlin talked about the fact that Cam Sutton gives them the ability to move some of the other guys around to different positions in the defense. So I think that really when you look at uh, the, the the whole picture of the Steelers, it's all starting to come together. And it's coming together in a way where you start to say to yourself, this could actually be the year. I mean, forget about winning a playoff game. I, I think that's got to be the absolute minimum standard for this team is winning a playoff game at this point. They're good enough to do that, you know, and they're probably going to be, let's just say we play it out. Okay. Uh, let's say, I think, don't they play Philadelphia? Who do they play? They play somebody on the road that I thought, well, that's a place they usually don't play very well. And uh, yeah, so they play at Philadelphia at the Ravens and then they play the chiefs in three weeks in a row. All right. And you could even throw, even though they play, a, even though they're terrible right now in some ways, they play at Cincinnati. That could be an interesting game. So there's four games there. Let's say the Steelers lose two of them. I, I would say if you lose two, that, that, that puts them at 13 and four. That's probably realistic. You know, 13 and four. And at that point, they're probably the number three seed. Well, if you look at who they would play, the four seed will be Houston. You know, they're going to win the AFC South. And that's not saying much because that division stinks. But they'll be the four seed. And then you could see some situations where even the Ravens, you know, the Ravens could fall to the five, the six seed, you know. But let's say they're the five seed. It means the Steelers are probably going to play somebody like the Chargers or the Broncos. Broncos, Chargers, on your home field in the first round of the playoffs, you got to beat, you got to win that game. You got to win that game. I'm, I, don't, I don't care what anybody says. You've got to, you've got to beat that team on your home field. And then at that point, Anything can happen, and then you move forward. But I think that that's got to be the minimum. But I think the way that they're playing on defense gives them a chance. But the other part of it is their offense is still evolving. I mean, I think that if you look at what they're doing on offense, yesterday was not very good at all. Wasn't very good at all. 
it was, uh, you know, uh, choppy. It was inconsistent. It was, um, at times, felt like they were uh, being a little too conservative. But the reality is the passing game, we've seen that come together already, haven't we? We've seen the passing game really get to a place where it was, you know, capable of moving the ball at a, at, at a high level, at a high rate, capable of giving the Steelers a chance to win a game if the score got out of control a little bit. And so I think that that's really what we're going to do. Uh, when we look at this offense, I'm not looking at the offense now. I'm looking at it, se- you know, seven weeks from now. What is it going to look like? And I feel like, there will be some chemistry that will continue to develop between George Pickens and Russell Wilson. I think a big thing is the offensive line. Mason McCormick and 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 and, uh, and uh, Zach Fraser will continue to get better and better and better and better because they're rookies, and the more they play, the better they're going to get. And both of those guys are brawlers and maulers, by the way. I love both of those guys. Uh, I just think they're going to be Steelers for a long, long time, um, and they're going to be – Steelers who, you know, are among fan favorites because they are everything we love here in Western PA, aren't they? They're they're meat and potatoes. They're you know tough guys. They're 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 guys that blow off the ball and and, and love to like knock people around. I mean, those are the guys that, that that we love. And by the way, we another guy we never talk about anymore is Dan Moore Jr. Remember Dan Moore Jr.? He was the guy that was basically um, you know, the, has been sort of um, the guy that everyone had pointed to as the biggest problem. Their biggest problem is basically um, Dan Moore Jr. Well, guess what? He He's played pretty well. We haven't heard his name very much, have we? We haven't talked about him very much because he's played really kind of reasonably well. And I think that's the key there. So, you know, the offensive line will get better. I think the chemistry will get better. Listen, they've got two running backs. I don't think either one of them is elite, but they are basically pretty good. Now, Paul Woodward right here, I'm going to show you what he said. What's the answer for Jones? Because that is the million-dollar question. Now, one of the things that's very clear is that Mike Tomlin wants to make it very clear to anybody that's going to ask him, Broderick Jones is his guy. He said it again today. He said it on on Sunday after the game. He said it yet today again at his press conference. He makes it very, very clear to anyone that will listen. Broderick Jones is his guy. And the reason that he's his guy is because obviously they invested a lot in him. But he says he's young. He's growing. He's learning. And he's the guy that they feel like has upside. He has upside from the standpoint of his pedigree. He has upside from the standpoint of his athleticism, his size, his strength, all that other stuff. His footwork will get better. But the other part of it is there could be a time where he moves to his more natural position, which is left tackle. And if he moves to left tackle, he might actually be even better than he is right now. But the holding calls, the procedure calls, the, you know, getting blown by at times, you know, Mike Tomlin had basically has said that, well, it's not as bad as you think. <laughs> That's the other thing. It's not as bad as you think, but I don't know that I agree with that. I just feel like really when you look at Broderick Jones, he's going to be a guy who is going to get better because he's going to play more. But he's got to start to cut down on some of the mistakes he's making. He's got to start to cut down on some of the the, the, the penalties and some of the, you know, procedure calls that he's getting and some of the things that he's doing where he's getting blown past. It is really kind of one of those things where I believe, I really believe that if Broderick Jones pulls it together and they can get this whole thing where the line is playing a lot better and in sync, where the offense takes off. Now, I think one of the things that's going to be very, very interesting going forward here, because they only have three or four, and, and, and actually, who is, let's see, Dylan Green brings this up, and it's true. Going forward to the, the, the Browns game, looking ahead to the Browns game, 
Um, they've only got three days of work. Only got three days. And so they've got to figure out in three days a game plan that makes sense. And as Dylan Green says, how about more fields? Now, one of the things that's interesting is this, that the Browns just played the Saints. And why is that significant? Because I don't know if you saw any of the game or you saw any of the highlights of the game or you even just looked at the box score from the game. But the Saints obviously have a guy on their team um, by the name of Taysom Hill, who is a quote-unquote backup quarterback, but he's also more of a runner and more of a guy that they use in a lot of different ways. Taysom Hill ran for seven times for 138 yards and scored three touchdowns. I mean, it is what it is, but he also caught eight passes for 50 yards. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to do that with uh, Justin Fields, but my point is there's a package for Justin Fields, and we got to see a little bit of it yesterday, didn't we? Just a little bit, a little taste of the Justin Fields package. Look, given what's going on in the red zone, which is not much, I don't see how it hurts if you get inside the 10-yard line to try and you see if you can put Justin Fields in a couple of times and see if he can, you know, uh, score touchdowns. Uh, but the other part of it is, in three days, it's hard to implement that. But if you've been implementing it a little bit each week, now all of a sudden you pull it out. The Browns don't have time to really take a look at that. Uh, and I think that's really got to that's really got to be the answer in in my estimation. The answer's got to be use Justin Fields more this week because they're not going to be prepared for it. And, and even if they are, they don't have enough time in two, basically two days of preparation to try and figure out all the different ways they're going to get attacked. That's why these Thursday night games are hard. There's two factors in these Thursday night games that are, that are very clear. Number one, most of these guys have not really recovered fully from the Sunday game, and especially a game like the Ravens game they played yesterday. It was a physical game. You know, you listen to these NFL guys, they tell you, usually by Thursday or, four, or Friday, they're starting, their bodies are starting to feel better and they're ready to start, you know, uh, ramping it up to go for, you know, the next game. Usually six or seven days. Well, Thursday night, there's still probably some guys that are a little bit sore, little guys, you know, and so you look at a guy like Cam Hayward, who's a little bit older, you know, or guys that have played a lot of snaps and, and all that stuff. So that's number one why these Thursday games are such a weird sort of dynamic. The second one is um, it's, it's, it's really hard to game plan for everything that might happen in two days or whatever. So, you know, you got to give the guys a day off. And so basically you have Tuesday. Well, if you're traveling, uh, thankfully for the Steelers, they're only traveling up to Cleveland. So I don't know, you know, I don't know what that means uh, in terms of logistically, but, if you're traveling across the country, like say you have a Thursday night game and you have to get on an airplane, you're basically talking about one and a half days you have to really get ready for um, a, a game on Thursday night. That's not enough time to prepare. And, you know, preparation is such an important part of getting ready to play on, a, on, on Sunday or whatever. So to me, I think that if you add the Justin Fields package in this week, you know, make no mistake, they've been working on it every single week. It's been in every single week since Russell Wilson took over. They've been working on a package of plays for Justin Fields. They just haven't used it. They used it, you know, real little bit the, uh, yesterday. But for the most part, they haven't used it yet. This would be the perfect example of, of, of a week that you want to go out and you want to say, let's use this now. Let's throw this package out there now.